This week we'll be taking a look at the MetaWare CPRO. This is a nice little all-in-one BLE sensor module in a tiny package. Let's take a look at the good and bad points of this tiny little module. So apparently no one can think of a gag for this week's video. So I went to the gym and asked all my mates there for some ideas. But they didn't really have any ideas that I could use. Thanks a lot guys. I thought you had all the ideas. Nah, sorry mate. Alright. I guess it's on with the show. Ambient Lab is a company that's coming out with a range of BLE enabled sensor modules in various price ranges and sizes. All of these modules are aimed at people wanting to jump straight into a sensor driven application. So you'll find that they're a little bit more expensive than the usual DIY devices. There's also no way of uploading the firmware, so unfortunately no Arduino IDE. And you access them through iOS, Android or C++ APIs. There are a number of modules that can measure humidity, temperature, pressure, infrared, light, heart rate and motion, with all of them containing the same ARM MCU. The MetaWare R series modules are medium sized motion sensor modules with inbuilt LiPo charging and the MetaWare C series modules aims at the wearable market with a small footprint and running off a coin cell battery. It is the new CPRO that we'll be reviewing in this video. The CPRO is yet another Kickstarter I backed as I was looking for options for a product I'm developing for the sports and fitness industry. So the package arrived last week and I've been eager to unbox and review it. I was impressed with this Kickstarter as their communication was great and delivery was actually on time. Unusual, eh? The package came in a standard overseas mail envelope with, to be honest, minimal package protection. But I've seen far worse than this from Kickstarter. The CPRO has all the features of its brother, the C, with the addition of pressure, magnetometer, ambient light sensors. So this is what you call a 10 DOF IMU. There are three main sensor chips used. For the accelerometer and gyroscope, this is provided by the Bosch BMI-160. For the magnetometer, this is provided by the Bosch BMM-150. And for the pressure sensor, the BMP-280. It also has a user programmable button, RGB LED, haptic driver and temperature sensor. Basically every real world sensor you'd want all running off a coin cell battery. The heart of the device is an ARM Cortex-M0 SOC with an NRF51822 BLE module. You have 256 kilobytes flash and 16 kilobyte RAM for onboard data logging. There are also several GPIO pins available for you, supporting I2C, 5 digital inputs, 4 analog and 1 haptic. So you can potentially add other sensors or control devices. One of the things that makes a company particularly successful is the availability of documentation and support. Ambient Lab have been around for a while and so they have great documentation and support on their website. They have a fully documented iOS, Android, Windows and Linux APIs with everything covered. That's all really great but what's it like to use? Ambient Lab provide two apps for you to use. The first one shows off all the features of the CPRO. The second one allows you to set the CPRO to motion logging mode and send the results to you. All you have to do is insert the coin cell battery and you're away. Once connected, you can do things such as change the iBeacon name of your CPRO, update firmware and reset the device. You have access to all the features on this device. You can download this demo app from their GitHub page and build it yourself. If you do, make sure you open the workspace file and not the Xcode file, otherwise you'll see errors like this. And how well does this demo app work? Accelerometer readings were fairly responsive. The same could be said about the gyro and magnetometer. However, the CPRO does not have any motion fusion, so you will have to code this up yourself. The API also includes tap detection and several other orientation detection methods. After about an hour of testing, I started running into issues with the interface getting disconnected again and again and again until I noticed that the battery was almost flat. Seems that if the battery drops below 30%, things start to go wrong. So I chucked another battery in. Around an hour later, yet another battery. Seems these things go through batteries, like I go through socks. Next it was time to test one of the APIs besides iOS. I had already rebuilt the iOS API from GitHub, so I knew that was working well. So I tried out the unofficial Python API wrapper under Linux. This is a fairly complete wrapper that provides everything from the official MetaWare API allowing you to read sensor data and control GPIO pins. Before building this, make sure you have these packages installed under Debian or Ubuntu. Then you can install the Pi MetaWare API directly from GitHub. Once finished, you can test out the Python API with a few simple scripts. 
the LED script is the simplest and just flashes the onboard green LED 10 times. The second script I tested was a basic accelerometer output script, which seemed to work well. So what do I think of the MetaWare C Pro? If I were going to use this as part of a small DIY project, I probably wouldn't use it. Not being able to replace the firmware limits this device to being just a controlled unit, rather than allowing it to be autonomous in a network of sensors. And the lack of onboard fusion algorithms may cause some issues for people. However, the biggest downside is a battery life. I went through three coin cell batteries in three hours, just with my basic testing. On the upside, the API documentation and support were outstanding, and everything worked as expected. I'd give this a Nick Make rating of 4.2, with the battery life really letting it down. Thanks for watching this quick review on the C Pro. Hopefully next time I'll be able to review one of the new NanoPi boards. Is it a contender for the title of the king of SBCs? If you like this channel, then you can subscribe by clicking any of the icons around the place. And if you'd like me to review a board or post a tutorial on how to do something, then leave a comment below and I'll be happy to do it. Until then, see you next time.